Good afternoon. You're watching Research in Mono O'Hara. I'm uh, Ethan Allen, filling in as host for Jay Fidel. Uh, with me today in the studio, we have Dr. Bin Chen. Welcome. He's from the uh, Hawaii Institute for Geology and uh, Planetology, or Geophysics and Planetology, sorry. Uh, it's part of SOAS, the School for Ocean and Earth Sciences and Technology. And we also have uh, Xiao Jing Lai, uh, who's a third year PhD student in that same group, I think. Excellent, excellent. Welcome. It's, it's great to have you guys here. Thank you, Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here. And we're going to be talking about experimental simulations of planetary interiors. So this, this, this is a, a pretty uh, complex subject, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what it's about in sort of big picture, simple terms? Yeah, we basically employ uh, high pressure techniques combined with uh, X-ray and uh, neutron and laser techniques to probe material properties under high pressure and temperature conditions found in the Earth's and planetary interior. Okay. So uh, what are we, uh, the, so the tools that we are using is uh, like this. So we have diamond anvil cells uh -huh. and the mountain anvil cells for generating high pressure and also high temperature. Okay, this is because materials deep in the Earth are under a lot of very high pressure, very high temperature. Yeah. And you need to know what those look like, what their properties are in mm -hmm. order to understand them and understand if you're seeing them in the yes. Earth. So you mm -hmm. take small samples of them yeah. in this. And squeeze it to Act. quite high pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Do you want to? OK. So this is an example of a diamond ever cell. Uh, so we have two diamonds. Uh, but this is the cornea. It's no uh, diamond. But it's quite similar uh, one. So we have um, we polish the tip and mm, to make a small coolant. And uh, we can squeeze samples, um, squeeze samples. Uh, uh, so we use two diamonds to squeeze samples like this. Excellent. You're using diamond because it's very, very hard yeah, and, uh, and it doesn't compress. Yeah, and it's transparent to the. Ah, so you can also yeah. see your sample in it. Yeah, yeah we can actually look uh, under the microscope right. to see your sample, and then we can probe uh, the material properties of these samples okay. under high pressure. Uh, by X-ray or laser. Okay, and yeah. you can see how it is deforming and changing structurally. Yeah. So we will show some interesting videos about uh, squeezing water into ice and the melt ice uh, under high temperature. So uh, this summer we have uh, uh, two visiting students coming to our group, and then we have uh, uh, done some cool experiment about uh, squeezing water into ice and mm. also heat it. And then when, and, and then the ice uh, so melt at high temperature, huh. and when we cool it down, so the ice recrystallize. So this type of ice is not the ice that you can normally find in your freezer. Uh -huh. so this is a high pressure form of the ice. It has a different structure, and then it has uh, like a different property, of course. Really? It might exist in some other like icy satellite or icy moons huh. in the solar system. Interesting. It put, puts you to mind of uh, Kurt Vonnegut's, uh, Kurt Vonnegut, the author, wrote, wrote a book, yeah. uh, Ice, Ice Nine. Nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we hope yeah. this isn't it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it. everything will freeze. Keep, keep it away from water if it is, right? <laughs> excellent, excellent. So, uh, one of the things I know you focus on is carbon, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, and again, this probably just reveals my own ignorance about, about geology. I thought there was a lot of silica minerals and an iron core. I don't think of a lot of carbon in deep in the earth. Mm -hmm. wh wh where is sort of where is the carbon? And why is it there? What's it doing? And why are you interested in it? Yeah, carbon. So carbon cycle is very uh, important, pro uh, like a subject uh, to humankind, right? So we, uh, the reason why we are here, because of carbon. Like right. uh, on the Earth, sure, we are carbon forms. Right? Yeah. Right. So we, uh, so the, uh, so that now there are a lot of controversies about uh, carbon reservoirs right. or the carbon cycles uh, in the Earth's interior. Right. How much gets in the atmosphere? Where it gets uh, stored on Earth, in Earth, right? So what are the largest reservoir in the Earth's interior? So uh, and then what I, uh, in my belief that uh, so from our data. I think the, the, the Earth's core might be uh, the largest reservoir uh, of carbon in the deep Earth. Really? Yeah, and then uh, uh, we know diamond we use uh, as our tools to, to generate the high, temp high pressure is uh, a form of carbon as well. Right. So it 
come from the upper mantle or the even the lower mantle. Mm -hmm. so, and then we can like uh, harvest this diamond, and then we can it can be used as a gem, or we can use it as our research tools. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. Now we were actually uh, just had a show a little bit ago talking about uh, graphene, of course, another another mm -hmm. form of carbon. And yeah. carbon is certainly amazing stuff. It has mm -hmm. uh, multiples of properties. But yes, I can I can see if if uh, if the carbon is being stored deep in the earth, it's presumably more secure. It's not going to be popping out into our atmosphere and contributing to, to global uh, climate change so much mm -hmm. if there are ways. And I gather there are some very exciting new technologies that have some potential to be storing carbon in mineral deposits, mm -hmm. take carbon dioxide and pump yeah. it down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does your work inform that work then? Uh, or, so so our work is, uh, we are looking at the even deeper. Right. So we are looking at uh, mostly uh, the lower mantle or okay. the core. Okay. And that's, so that's uh, some, uh, so this is also the topic of uh, Xiao Jin's uh, like a PhD work. Yeah, uh -huh. okay, so. so you can probably talk about Sure. That. Yeah, so my PhD work is about the carbon in the Earth's core. Okay. So we have, the Earth has a uh, outer uh, liquid core, uh, liquid outer core and uh, solid inner core. Right. And so we think, uh, because carbon has a very high solubility in iron, so we think when the Earth's core forms, so carbon can dissolve into the iron and uh, sink into the center of the core. Oh. Yeah, so. Because we always hear of it as being an iron core, but you're saying it's an iron carbon core, basically. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Iron, uh, iron is the major mm -hmm. element in the mm -hmm. core, but there are some light elements. Uh -huh. yeah. Interesting. How, how much, I mean, is it 1% carbon? Is it 10% carbon? Do you, do you have a sense of that? Uh, that's uh, uh, that's well. our research. So we need to <laughs> like uh, compare yeah. the density of our data to the Earth model to see what's... Uh, ah, I see. So if you take... Yeah little bits of iron, compress it there, look at, look at it, and look at the signals you get out of it, and then look at the outer core and the inner core, you can mm -hmm. maybe make some guesses as to how much. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if we, yeah, I think it's important to know that the composition of the outer core, like in terms of like how much carbon uh, exists in the core, because uh, we know that uh, from the surface to the core, uh, or the, to, to the center of the Earth, so we, you have, uh, a lot of like a uh, carbon reservoirs, right? right. Uh, at, uh, in the atmosphere, so our like uh, air, it has uh, CO2, right. carbon dioxide, and then you have carbonate in the crust or in the mantle. And then you have diamond or graphite in the mantle as well. Uh, it's more, uh, and then, so if we know the carbon content in the, or the carbon, the, uh, the carbon content of the largest reservoir, uh, of iron in the in our planet, and we can understand how they interact between the different layers of the uh, yeah, of the Earth, the, how they exchange carbon. Excellent, like excellent. Perhaps we should. I, th I think we have a, a few slides. Perhaps should yeah. we should mm -hmm. we take a quick look at those? There we go. Okay. Maybe you'll tell tell us what's going on here. Okay. So this is about. Uh, uh, um, experimental simulation of planetary interior. Um, so, Bing, do you want to talk? Y about? Yeah, I think uh, so. Uh, if we look at uh, this, uh, uh, the structure, the internal structure of the Earth and the other uh, planet or satellite, so we so we can see that they have very similar structure. It's all like an onion like multiple layers, so, right? So you can, uh, if you cut our Earth into halves, you can find that, that our core actually exists uh, uh, like a three thousand uh, three thousand kilometer deep. So uh, and then all, all yeah all the way up to six thousand four hundred kilometer. So it's uh, it it has uh, our core has a, a size of the planet Mars. Oh, okay. So you can here is uh, uh, so to the right you can see the Mars is about the size of the right. of the core. Okay. So uh, that's some like uh, so, so the nature of, and the dynamic of the core is quite important for humankind or for life in the Earth. As we know that the uh, liquid motion uh, in the outer core drives the geodynamo and then finally generated the magnetic field that pr protect us from the radiation from the space. Exactly. Uh, that's pos possibly part of the reason there's a high form life uh, on Earth. Right, because we are yeah. protected, right. Yeah. 
And then if we look at also the uh, this uh, uh, satellite, uh, so Jupiter uh, is the largest uh, planet in the solar system, and it has uh, more than 60 moons. Right. And then among them, the largest uh, among them are Io, Europa, uh, Ganymede, and Callisto. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are some interesting things about uh, this uh, satellite. Uh, 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 scientists uh, have found that, uh, particularly for Ganymede and the crystal, there are a large amount of uh, water or water ice exists in its interior, mm -hmm. so in their interiors. The next slide, uh, please. Yeah, so, so, the, uh, so this is the picture of uh, Ganymede. Uh, so you can see the onion-like uh, structure. So it has a uh, hexagonal ice on the surface. Uh, it means uh, the hexagonal ice is the ice you can find in the freezer okay. or the snow. Uh, and uh, uh, people believe there's a sub, uh, sub, uh, sub ocean. Subsurface ocean? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, subsurface oceans. Um, and uh, if you go deeper, you can find the different kinds of ice. It's mm -hmm. tetragonal ice, ice 6. And then it has, uh, then if you go deep, even deeper, it has rocky mantle and uh, iron uh, iron core mm -hmm. yeah so um, so <clears throat> uh, you want to know like uh, what kind of ice and uh, right um, if ice six sinks and, and sits at the bottom of the ocean it's very very different than our ice which floats right uh, ice six is uh, a denser Answer. form right. of ice right and then, uh, and so we in our level we can actually uh, squeeze the water into ice. Uh -huh. yeah. Into ice, you can actually make ice six. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And you mm -hmm. drop it in water and it sinks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very briefly before it melts. Yeah. I assume. <laughs> so this is another uh, moon of Jupiter, uh, Callisto. So it also has a uh, hexagonal ice on the surface, and uh, people also believe there's a uh, subsurface oceans and. Uh, uh, Deeper because the pressure and temperature conditions are different, so they have a uh, monoclinic ice, ice five, um, and uh, um, rock, rock and tetragonal ice uh, in the uh, in the center. So this one uh, is more like a mixture in the interior. So it's because not. The, yeah, because crystal uh, people believe that the crystal is only partly differentiated. Oh. Not like a Ganymede. Ganymede is uh, fully differentiated. Okay, yeah. okay, and, and just because of the different way it formed and all, it's, it's actually structured now differently. Yeah, and, and also so it's uh, this uh, crystal is a farther away from Jupiter. Ah, yeah. so it's much less gravitational impact and all. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I gather they're actually sending a probe into Jupiter itself to learn more about its yeah, yeah. central Juno. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. That's that's going to be intriguing. So, uh, and I think we also now have a video, don't yeah. we? Yeah, okay. yeah, we have a two minutes of video. Okay, that'd be yeah. great. Okay, so in 2015, so it's often us, our mineral physics group uh, show how to squeeze water into ice. So this is the poster about uh, our light, uh, high pressure press. Uh, so left hand is the uh, multi anvil press, and on the table we can see all kinds of Mm, diamond ammo cell. In this picture, Bing was showing the elementary school student how to uh, use the microscope to see the ice at uh, room temperature in the diamond ammo cell. So this is a video. When we increase the uh, pressure, we can see the uh, ice grows. So um, it's on the microscope. So uh, in this summer, we have two visiting students from University of Science and Technology of China. And uh, uh, one of them, the project is about uh, uh, like uh, modify the heaters in the diamond armor cell and uh, do the ice melting test. So you, you can see here the uh, heater is about 600 degrees C. Uh, so when we can increase the temperature at, in the diamond armor cell, so when we increase the temperature, you can see it's the uh, it, it, the ice melted. Mm. Uh, so you can see the cracks and mm -hmm. the ice yeah. melted uh, oh. along the. So when we decrease the temperature, you can see the water recrystallize, mm -hmm. and then it become uh, larger and larger, and uh, eventually it will form a one piece. 
of uh, eyes. So this eyes is uh, um, different from the eyes we can find in the refrigerator. Okay, it's excellent. The eyes seven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on, on that note, we're going to take a quick break here. But okay. we'll, be, we'll be right back. Uh, I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Research on Manoa. Uh, fill in for Jay Fidel. Uh, Dr. Bin Chen and Zhao Jing Wei are with me today. We're talking about ice. All right. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Abachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a so nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock, uh, Deep Tech Fahrenheit, Studios, where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. Deep. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, host of Sustainable Hawaii. Every Tuesday at noon, we talk about issues important to Hawaii's sustainability, the issues of conservation, renewable energy, uh, land management, food and energy security, and other issues that are extremely important as the World Conservation Congress approaches in the first week of September, and next year's World Youth Congress that's taking place here that's focusing on sustainability as well. Please tune in, join us as we highlight all the good things that are happening to achieve sustainability in Hawaii. Mahalo. And you're back with me, Ethan Allen, your host here on Research in Manoa. Uh, I'm filling in for Jay Fidel today, who's traveling. With me today are two fine researchers from uh, the University of, Mon of Hawaii at Manoa. Uh, Zhao Jing Lai from the, is a third year PhD student, and Dr. Bin Chen is in the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology. And we've been talking about how they f figure out uh, about the carbon deep in the, in the center of the Earth and also, I guess, in other planets. We had some interesting uh, uh, shots of some uh, ice and different forms of ice you were talking about. Mm -hmm. But you've got a very intriguing device here that I, I, I got curious about this, this mm -hmm. hexagonal looking. Uh, piece here that, that seems to have a, a lot of little bits. Can you tell me about wh what this is and what it's doing? Yeah, so it's, this is the type of device that, that we are using uh, to uh, generate high pressure and high temperature in our lab uh, in uh, uh, Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology. So this is a, a device uh, called a, a mountain anvil assembly. So we uh, put our samples at the center uh, of this octahedron. Okay. And we put also the uh, either graphite or metal uh, furnace so around it so that we can apply uh, voltage and then to increase the temperature as well. Okay. So we place these wedges, uh, this uh, octahedron at the, uh, in, yeah, inside of the cavity that is formed by eight cubes. So this, each of these cubes has a truncated edge. Mm -hmm. So depending on the size of the edge, uh, the smaller the size of the edge, a uh, chunky the edge, the larger, the higher pressure you can generate. Okay. And then we can uh, just uh, put the eight cubes uh, around it, mm -hmm. and then we, uh, we, so we also have a thermocouple to measure the temperature as well. Mm -hmm. And we put this G10, uh, glue this G10 around uh, these cubes, and then place this uh, whole cube to a uh, work type of module, and then this module will go in a hydraulic press. Okay, so yeah. we have a 2,000 ton press uh, in our lab. Wow. And we can increase the pressure and then apply voltage uh, to, the sun, uh, to, to the furnace and then increase the temperature as well. Okay. And then, uh, uh, so I will have uh, some, a few slides just uh, showing uh, what we do. Uh, I, I think we, we will have a movie first, please. Uh, show what we do in our lab to okay. prepare uh, this uh, multi anvil press, okay. uh, multi anvil assembly. <laughs> All yeah. right. So, so what, oh. What, oh. what are we seeing here? I think this has already been. So, this so, is a diamond anvil uh, cell. Okay. So, this is used for compressing water into ice and yeah. melt the. Okay. Melt the so this is basically just working in two dimensions, or yeah, one, you know, yeah. right, just one, one way of yeah. pressure. And, and, and this is the, yeah, the cubes, uh, right. so my student is preparing for this multi anvil press, right. uh, multi anvil assembly. So we right. can see the uh, each uh, cube has a chunky edge. edge. And right. we have our samples with a thermocouple and a furnace mm -hmm. uh, inside of this octahedron. And then we place this octahedron uh, in the cavity that is formed by these eight chunky cubes. Then we can uh, just uh, uh, place eight cubes around the, the octahedron. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. 
so all this, uh, and then we can glue this G10 like uh, what I did uh, yeah. okay. to, uh, right. to the cube, and then place this uh, multi envelope assembly in the uh, wedges, uh, uh, and then we can place this whole worker type of module in this big press. Uh -huh, okay. So this is the a very big press we have. Uh, it's a 2,000 ton press, and we can use uh, our, the computer to control pressure and the temperature okay. that, that we want to reach. And and at, the, we, at the same time, you can image the sample in the middle, right? Uh, image the sample, uh, yeah, there's a certain type of device uh, in synchrotron labs, so okay. we can do some imaging okay. of the sample. Uh, so this, uh, sometimes we travel to uh, Ch Chicago to do an experiment, okay. and this is an experiment that's set up uh, called the Paris and Edinburgh Press that we use uh, uh, for our viscosity measurement. Okay. So you can see a, a, flo a, a sphere floating mm -hmm. in the in the liquid. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a yeah a surface sphere okay. that we place uh, inside uh, this uh, parents Annenberg uh, uh, cell assembly uh, to put this sphere in in this uh, iron nickel carbon uh, uh, mixture, and then we compress this mixture using this uh, parents Annenberg press, and we heat it up until the sample is molten. And as soon as the sample is molten, then we can see the uh, probe sphere to float uh, yeah. to the top. It gives you a signal that it's molten, and presumably the ro rate at which it floats up tells you some things about, yeah, about the properties. The viscosity, yeah. Right. So if you uh, uh, cook a, uh, uh, some soups, right, right. at first it may, may be it's less viscous, thick, right? Right. And you, it, it's easier to stir, and then later it will become viscous, and it's uh, more difficult mm -hmm. to stir. So that's the basic principle. If you have a viscous uh, fluid, then this uh, probe sphere will flow slowly. Right. Okay. If you have uh, less viscous uh, fluid, then it will flow very fast. Okay. So you need the, uh, uh, in our case, this iron nickel carbon liquid mm -hmm. has a very low viscosity, surprisingly. Huh. And, uh, very low viscosity. Yeah, it's only t five times the viscosity of liquid water. Oh, wow. yeah. so that's surprising. You sort of think yeah. almost intuitively that liquid iron would be very, very dense and very viscous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but so that's why we needed this high-speed uh, camera, so it uh, can, like a uh, high-speed camera, like uh, to uh, 1,000 frames per second, the camera, to catch the movement of the probe sphere. Excellent, excellent. And I guess we're back to seeing uh, a couple of the Galilean satellites again, with uh, some different properties. Okay. Yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, the, about the uh, ice. Uh, so as, as you can see that the Ganymede and the Callisto, has a large amount of water ice uh, in its interior, close mm -hmm. to 50%. Okay. Yeah, Io and uh, Europa, they are uh, closer to Jupiter. Mm -hmm. so they have uh, a little bit less uh, ice. Although, doesn't Europa have a lot of water on the surface, apparently? Isn't yeah, it? yeah. yeah no, that's so okay. But, that's but just in the interior, in the, yeah, right. it might not have as much, as much ice than uh, Ganymede or Callisto. So it's a, it's a sort of natural experiment in, in different forms of water and different yeah, forms of water. Yeah, that's why we, right. we call it the experimental simulation of planetary interior. So yeah. We want to simulate the conditions uh, found in the uh, planetary interior, and then we study the material properties. Mm -hmm. So we can provide a, a bridge uh, between uh, observa uh, ob observation and uh, model. Right. So mod the, the people who, want, who do modeling one need to use our data in order to uh, have a more like a uh, realistic model for the planet. Exactly. Terms. So this yeah. is this is actually sort of oddly parallel then to this new Hawaii EPSCOR project Eco Hawaii, mm -hmm. where they both are measuring the the characteristics and property of the groundwater, but also modeling the reservoirs of it. So, mm -hmm. and, and the, the measurements inform the model, and the model sort of informs what they should be measuring. And you mm -hmm. you're sort of doing the same kind of thing, except you're both looking very far out into mm -hmm. the into the cosmos and also oh, very, very, very deep, deep into yeah, the planet. Yeah. 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 Right. Excellent, excellent. Well, this, this sounds like very, very exciting work. Um, l let, me, let me ask you a little bit about, about the, the students in your lab. You, you get undergraduates, mostly graduate students. Uh, do you have, uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, now I have uh, two graduate students. Okay. And then uh, sometimes I will take a summer intern. Okay. And then, uh, so. I yeah, I have some messages for to Hawaii kids. Uh -huh. If you are interested in science, you are welcome to contact contact me. Then uh, I w so I will show you uh, like uh, how hyperbolic experiment are done, and then 
I will let you to get your hands dirty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, uh, actually, I know I used to, when I worked at the University of Washington, I used to manage mm -hmm. a, a, an REU research experience for undergraduate program. And, mm -hmm. and it was always fun to see the, these freshmen, sophomores come on in and, and work in a real lab. This was for many the first time they'd actually done real science. They'd been reading about science before, but actually working with real machines and discovering that mm -hmm. science isn't about the books. It's, a, it's really about what you're doing and yeah. what you're finding and what you're observing. Mm -hmm. And that, that can be yeah. very, very exciting for students. Now, mm -hmm. frighten some of them. Some of them immediately decide that they don't want to do science anymore. And that's, that's mm -hmm. a good thing to learn, I think, in 10 weeks, in, in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like a, yeah. Yeah, inquiry-based learning is uh, most effective. Right, right. Yeah. And it's, uh, in other ones, it brings them right on into science. They suddenly realize that this sort of tedious learning they've been doing up to this point is only the surface of it. And the fun stuff is to dig down in, begin to ask your own questions, and mm -hmm. figure out how to answer them, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, excellent. So what kinds of, of preparation would you suggest the student get if they want to move into this area? What, what sorts of courses would, would you think they should take? I wasn't able to understand the question I heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a uh, uh, so. Yeah, for our like a high pressure uh, mineral physics, I think we need uh, uh, some uh, quantitative skills. Like uh, you need to know uh, mass one one or two one or three one one and uh, physics and chemistry. Yeah, it's really a multidisciplinary field. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think so. Which is good. So it's a. Uh, so you can actually explore the different areas, like uh, uh, in our field. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you can, so so you know, physics has some connection with uh, uh, biology as well, mm -hmm. and uh, with uh, physics, right. with uh, uh, chemistry, exactly. and also like uh, geology. So like, this, this is where all the hot science is happening, right? At, the, at these intersections now between yeah, yeah. between the disciplines. Well, this is wonderful. This has been a very enriching conversation. I feel like I've learned a lot, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed explaining to, to a, a non-geophysicist what, what it is you do and why you do it. And I, I hope our audience has uh, has learned something too here from this. Uh, again, uh, Jiajing Lai and uh, Bin Chen from the both from the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology at UH Manoa. Thank you so much for being here. Aloha. Thank Very you. Very glad to be here. Aloha. Cool. Super.